Welcome to the Law School Playbook. Today's topic is time management. So this presentation is about making the most of your time, which is a lawyering skill, as is keeping track of your time. Time is critically important in practice. So I worked at a couple of large law firms where I was billing my time and the client, of course, paid close attention to the time spent on specific tasks because that's how the bill was created. When I worked in the court, time was likewise important because we had to work to get decisions out in a timely manner and keep the docket moving. So keeping track of time and using it efficiently and wisely is critically important to the practice of law. Now, I'm going to start this presentation with the caveat that most people coming into law school, and many times throughout a good bit of the first year, think they don't need a time management presentation. They think, well, I've got time management handled. I, I pretty much know how to budget my time, and I can figure it out. That's why I'm so glad to be recording this time management presentation, because even though you think you don't need it right now, at some point you're going to realize, okay, there I have so many tasks to do. There are only so many hours in the day. How am I going to accomplish all of this? And that's where time management techniques become critically important. And the better you can get at those techniques now, the better you'll be able to manage your time when you're working as an extern in a law office at the court or you're working as a summer law clerk. This is a critically important skill that you'll need throughout your career. Let's start with a few laws of time management. That's our comfort zone laws, right? Illich's law, he is a picture of him here. He was a philosopher. He said basically productivity decreases over time. So your brain can concentrate for 90 minute max, 90 minutes max. So it's the important, it emphasizes the importance of taking breaks, right? So if you say, okay, I'm going to study contracts all day on Sunday. That's my main focus. And you sit at the desk and, you know, four hours in, you're still pouring over your notes and trying to read your cases and brief your cases. The equivalent is like trying to cook over diminishing heat, right? You're trying to boil an egg and then picture you keep turning the heat lower and lower and lower. That's what happens when you don't take breaks. Okay, so it, it may seem counterintuitive to take some breaks while you're studying, particularly if you have a lot to do, but it's sure going to take that egg a whole lot longer to boil if you're constantly turning down the heat. And to the extent that you don't take breaks, particularly beyond the 90 minute mark, that's what you're doing with your studying. So that's Illich's Law, something to keep in mind. There's another law called Parkinson's Law. And what this law stands for is the idea that work expands or contracts to fit the designated time, right? The more time you have, the longer a task is gonna take. Um, so let me give an example of this. So if I asked you to read a case and I said, here's the decision class, I want you to read this, um, you have one week to do it. It would take you one week to read the case. Not necessarily because you're pouring over it for the week, but you're anticipating reading it, you're thinking about reading it, you're, you're moving it to, from to-do list to to-do list, and then you finally sit down and read it, and then you might reread it before class. And so that task of reading the case will, will more or less fill up that week. Alternatively, if I handed you the same decision in class, and I said, okay, everybody, here's the case, you all have 10 minutes to read it, you would get that case read in some way or another in 10 minutes. An example that is often used in the business context is sending an email. If you are drafting a substantive email and you know you say, well, I'm just gonna get started here, you know, that could take a whole long time. Whereas if you said, okay, I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to put my thoughts together and I'm gonna send it out. So Parkinson's law is that the work expands or contracts to fit the time. So what does this mean? It means that you need to designate time for tasks. 
How long is my contracts reading going to take? How long do I think my criminal uh, law reading is going to take? My outlining, my briefing, how long is that going to take? And in the beginning, you may be wildly off (laughs) in your estimations. But the point is that you should get in the habit of designating time for specific tasks. So your to-do list of your outstanding work and your outstanding study time should designate how much time should go to a given task. Because if you don't, that task will take you infinitely longer. Or if you say, I'm going to give myself the next two weeks to work on my legal writing project, guess what you're going to be doing on the second to last day? right? Maybe starting it or still working on it, as opposed to allotting a specific amount of time each day. So that's Parkinson's law, something to keep in mind. This is quite simply to demonstrate that multitasking is a myth, okay? Just as the woman in this picture is, you know, answering the phone, looking at a tablet, looking at a laptop, reading something, um, Multitasking and our ability to do it is an absolute myth. The science tells us that the human brain can really only focus on one thing at a time. So what does that mean? That means if you are trying to do multiple things like check email while you are reading, it's going to take you infinitely longer and you're not going to do as good of a job. So you need to have sustained and focused attention for a period of time. So some of my students, for them, this means putting their phone in their backpack while they're completing a given task. It means maybe isolating yourself in a study room so you're not interrupted by a friend. But if you find yourself multitasking or you fooled yourself into saying, I'm good at multitasking, that is a myth. So to the extent that you can reduce or eliminate your attempts to multitask, which I know is not easy, you are going to get more out of your time. So what's a way to reduce distractions? Here is a specific technique that was formulated by someone called Francisco Cirillo, and it's called the Pomodoro Technique. And the Pomodoro Technique is designed to make you focus. It kind of includes both Illich's Law and Parkinson's Law into this idea. And there's a whole book about it. But the gist of it is that you break your work down into specific cycles. So the standard Pomodoro cycle is 25 minutes long. So you work for a highly concentrated 25 minutes followed by a five minute break. And you do that four times, right? Till you're reaching, you know, the 120 minute mark And then you, well, it's 115 minutes, and then you take a more uh, extended break at the end of one full cycle. So students who have never heard of this before often say, you know, it's amazing because what you can accomplish in those 25 minutes or whatever length you choose works best for you as a cycle usually turns out to be much more than if you sat down without a deliberate intention, without a timer to just study. So that's how the Pomodoro technique works. So what we have to think about with the Pomodoro technique is how to reduce distractions. So distractions are going to occur regardless of whether or not we've set the timer for 25 minutes or not. So there are two types of distractions, external distractions and internal distractions. The external distractions are readily identifiable. They're your phone, they're your classmate coming up to talk to you, they're noises, all sorts of things that are external to us. And I thought when I first started to look into this that external distractions would be really the the tough distractions, right? Being distracted by your phone is rough and it's common, right? But actually, the science tells us that the distractions that are more disruptive and more frequent are those internal distractions, those interrupting thoughts that we have, right? So you're trying to read a case and all of a sudden it pops into your head. Oh, I wonder if I close my garage door. Or, I think I'm going to have pizza for dinner tonight. 
So those thoughts are extremely distracting and sometimes unconscious, right? So the recommendation is that, you know, not that you train your mind to be totally blank, because that seems like an impossibility, at least to me, who's constantly thinking. It's that you have a notepad beside you as you're studying. And as these internal thoughts pop up, you write them down. You write them down to just let go of them. And then when you're done with you know, your timed session, you look at them and see how important they truly are. Okay. So that's an introduction to Pomodoro. There's so much about it, but Pomodoro works best when you have a to-do list, right? When you have certain items that you're trying to accomplish within those timed cycles. And so how do you organize your to-do list? Well, that's when you might use a tool called the Eisenhower matrix, right? And it's giving your to-do items a, putting them into categories. So here is the Eisenhower matrix. So the very most important items you have fall into the urgent and important category. And those are things you want to do right away. You can't wait. You have a legal writing deadline that has to be done, right? So those are things you want to do right away. You know, reading for class that's tomorrow might fall into that category. The next category is, well, they're not urgent, but they're important, right? So the legal writing project is not due for two weeks, but I better get started on that research. I have to do it soon. So I'm going to keep that in the not urgent, but important category. The next category is urgent, but not important. There's a game on TV tonight I wanna watch, but it's not really important. It's happening soon, but it's not necessarily something I have to do. Another urgent, but not important example would be like cleaning my house. It's a disaster, right? It's bothering me. It seems urgent, right? It needs to be done. It's very dirty. My laundry needs to be done. But these are items that you could either delegate, ask your roommate, ask your significant other, family members to do for you, or you can reschedule them. Those are the items that fall into this category. And finally, the not urgent and not important are things that you could avoid and ignore altogether. You've been meaning to paint the railings on your front steps. It's not urgent and it's not particularly important. It would be nice if you did it, but you can avoid and ignore that. It's not hurting anybody. It's not a safety issue. It's just aesthetically unpleasing. Those can be put in the not urgent and not important category and can be avoided and ignored. So particularly in your first year, you're going to have to make a lot of decisions about where tasks are going to end up. And I want you to think, spend some time thinking about the green category, because I am someone who doesn't particularly like to ask for help. But, you know, there are certain times in your life that you have to rely on the people around you. And your first year of law school is one of those times. There are times where you're going to have to delegate tasks to others, right? If you have children and they need help with their homework, you know, maybe you have them take advantage of resources available for free at the library instead of you being the tutor, right? Um, Maybe you ask your significant other to run an errand for you, but you can't do it all. So you can use this system to prioritize your work. And then once you figure out what's in the urgent and important category, you can set a timer and reduce your distractions to complete those tasks using the Pomodoro technique. The point is you want to be deliberate about your use of time. The more deliberate you are in terms of planning and organizing the tasks that you're going to do and how you're going to spend your time, the more efficient you're going to be. So it may seem unnecessarily time consuming to sit down and make a study schedule for the week, but in the end, it will result in a better use of your time. So those are my thoughts on time management. You may think that you don't need it right now, 
but at some point you are going to need it. <laughs> so I'm glad it's recorded and here for you to remind you of some strategies you could use to reduce distraction. If you are looking for more resources or more information, feel free to hop on over to my website, which is www.lawschoolplaybook.com. And in the meantime, do your best and I'll be rooting for you. Thanks. Thanks.